Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons, unlike in my any other videos, in this video I'm not going to uh, solve any genetics problems, but I'm going to talk about plants and animal breeding and selection, how to set up goals about positive and negative selection, and also I'm going to talk stories today, hope it would be an uh, interesting video for you, and you will uh, learn something new today. In 1980s, uh, in the USSR where I was grown, uh, authorities allowed it people to have their own land. Before that, people cannot own their land except those people who were countrymen and lived in the villages. But uh, people who uh, lived in cities couldn't have their own land, but in the beginning of the 1980s, People were allowed to have a land, but uh, land was very limited. Uh, we call this in Russian Shoisotok, uh, in English it would be like 600, so 600 square meters. And here is the average dacha, how we call it. Uh, actually, this is summer house, and uh, in such summer house, you usually do not like uh, rest or go fishing or Tanning. Usually people work uh, in such uh, summer houses and uh, usually we grow salads, uh, onions, uh, 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 tomatoes and uh, potatoes. Uh, everyone had uh, greenhouses because of the climate in Russia. So uh, everyone or at least 50% of the population become uh, landowners and uh, had their own summer houses along with along with small parcels of land where people can grow uh, greens and vegetables for personal consumption. Because land were limited, half of the population of Russia unwillingly became uh, plant breeders and selectioners in order to get more harvest uh, from the uh, limited parcels of land. My parents also in 1980 got such parcel of land where we built our summer house and our family also became selectioners. Uh, we uh, saved the best performing fruits uh, and vegetables of uh, some plants for the next season. So this is uh, selection. And um, when I came to America I have found that uh, junk food is not only can be considered, say, McDonald's and uh, other fast food chains like McDonald's, but also I have found that strawberries are almost unedible. If you compare with those uh, that I get used in Russia, uh, because in Russia it was very sweet, very juicy and very tasty. In America it's turned out it's not juicy, it is not sweet and uh, it is long lasting. It can stay in plastic bag for weeks, but it is barely edible. Why? Because there is different goals. When you grow something for yourself, you, your goals are to grow tasty food. But you don't care uh, for uh, this food to last long. Because uh, you can pluck uh, strawberries Today you can eat them today and you don't care that next day it would spoil, would uh, give a juice and uh, you cannot uh, use it uh, for sale, for example, on market. And uh, the strawberries that you can purchase in Russia, usually you can purchase on the small markets and uh, those strawberries guaranteed would be plucked the same day because next day you wouldn't be able to sell it. And usually next day, if you didn't eat it, we just use it for gems. So this is good example uh, of different goals. Uh, when you're a commercial grower, you don't care about uh, test of your product. You care about uh, how long your product would last. If this would be very testful, but uh, it would last only one day, there is no sense for you to grow such product. 
you will go bankrupt after the first harvest, after the first season. So, uh, if you're a commercial grower, number one priority would be uh, to make your harvest last longer so it can reach your clients. And usually, uh, in modern world, that means that you have to ship uh, not just to uh, neighbor region, to different state, but uh, in many cases even to the different country. So, if you are a commercial grower, your goals can be totally different from those goals if you are uh, growing vegetables for your own consumption. For example, if you want to extend uh, fruits, vegetables and uh, berries shelf life, you have to understand that at the same time sugar content probably would go down because sugary berries would be much more attractive for bacteria. So, uh, such fruits uh, and berries also would uh, spoil faster. Of course, everyone wants that sugar content also would go up. We also want, uh, say, uh, increase um, uh, resistance to different uh, diseases. And we also want our uh, berries and fruits smell well, but uh, in real life it's uh, usually turned out that when you increase uh, some of the traits uh, that would be beneficial for you, other traits would go down. When we moved to United States, my wife uh, complained that uh, there are so many imported products from China, many of them fake, but she complained how they can fake natural products like strawberries, that looks like strawberries, but doesn't taste like strawberries. And here's the explanation. So, even before you would start uh, your breeding and selection process, you need to set up uh, right and correct goals. And usually this is not the goal to get the biggest harvest, the biggest fruits, or the biggest animal. For example, uh, what would be the point to get the biggest harvest at the same time when everyone harvesting the same uh, fruits, for example. Let's say that this is summer period, we can split it to three periods, early, summer and spring, uh, middle summer and autumn. And usually uh, we have the biggest supply of fruits during uh, the middle of the summer and autumn. And of course, even if you would get a lot of uh, product during this period, the prices would be lowest at this point. So let's say that this line represents the price of the product. As you see, uh, it would be highest when there is a low supply of product and would be lowest when everyone would harvest this product and this is going to be a uh, good supply of this product on the market. So. In the light of what I have said, why it wouldn't be a good idea to concentrate on these two periods, to concentrate your efforts to get a harvest within these two periods. Even if your uh, amount of the product wouldn't be the greatest, but if uh, you would be able to sell it for the greater price, this would make much more sense than uh, to provide oversupply during this period. And you know, some farmers even destroy their products when they see that they can sell their products below the price that they have spent in order to grow uh, their products. And also, sometimes you can see on the news uh, riots of the farmers that would demand more support from the government because of the oversupply that they have created.
the other goal that usually can be overlooked would be the goal to select uh, or uh, breed for uh, such plants that would be resistant for diseases. Because what would be the point to grow the plants that would be destroyed by diseases, whether fungal diseases or bacterial diseases or uh, viral diseases. So uh, another uh, goal can be instead of growing what everyone grows, to grow something with unusual traits. And people usually pay more money for something unusual that, uh, to what they get used for. Because if you are selling red strawberries, everyone have idea how red strawberries would cost, for example, one pound or one plastic bag. But nobody have idea how much white strawberries have to cost, because uh, you cannot compare them with other products, because uh, this product is unique. So you can charge more, because you don't have a competition, uh, you don't have uh, any product that you can compare, and uh, people are just curious to try something new. If you would follow these simple rules, you would never be a farmer, a newsmaker, who destroys his own produce. So now let's talk about uh, positive and negative selection. And uh, this is uh, probably the easiest way to start uh, breeding and selection for the beginner. Imagine, for example, that you have some plants. So let's say this is field and you have, uh, say, 100 plants. It makes uh, sense uh, to do positive and negative selection when you have a good supply of plants. And the first rule would be uh, that your plants or animals or it can be, say, beehives uh, have to show variation. If there is no going to be variation at all, you cannot select. You only can select when you have certain variation. For example, trade can vary from minimum in some plants to maximum in other plants. And uh, what is going to be a positive selection? Positive selection would be when you would find that this is going to be best performing plant, this is going to be best performing plant, this one, this one, this, this, and this. And of course you select these plants based on the traits that you're looking for. It can be size, it can be shape, it can be number of uh, fruits, vegetables, whatever uh, you want to select for. Uh, but once again, uh, don't go in the general trait. So uh, you harvest seeds and uh, next year you would uh, use seeds in order to plant a new uh, plants and in the next season you also would see uh, that uh, the trait also would have certain variation. Once again you select the best representative for this trait and uh, use the seeds for the next um, season. And this is example of the positive selection. Now let's talk about negative selection. What is a negative selection? Uh, in some cases it is easier and better to use negative selection instead of positive selection. For example, if, uh, as I said, uh, this is going to be not plants but would be beehives, it would be unpractical to destroy all the uh, beehives and just leave a few of them that is going to be best performing and uh, let them uh, openly uh, uh, breed in the case of plants openly uh, pollinate so this is going to be openly pollinated uh, field and uh, if it is going to be beehives uh, this is going to be openly breeding uh, queen
queens and drones. But as I said, this would be unpractical uh, to approach um, like this and destroy um, your product. And in this case, we would use negative selection. Negative selection is basically almost the same. Once again, we have a certain field. It can be plants, it can be beehives. And in this case, we eliminate uh, those, uh, say, beehives that uh, doesn't perform well or got a disease. So let's say this one got a disease, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So uh, in this case, we just eliminate those uh, bee families that is not uh, disease resistant. And for the next season, only those that uh, show resistance, uh, we would use for, once again, open breeding. It is much, much, much more easier than breed them manually. And uh, once again, next season, we specify which beehives uh, wouldn't be resistant for certain disease and we also eliminate them from our open breeding process. So now only those uh, hives uh, that is uh, healthy would participate in breeding and would give us in the next season more healthy beehives. And as a result also production of the honey would be increased if all our uh, beehives would be uh, healthy, then that means that production of the honey also would increase because you're not going to get a good results from those um, uh, insects, uh, from those bees that are uh, prone to disease. But once again, this is not necessary, have to be uh, selection for disease resistance, this can be any trait you wish. And one more important comment would be that you have to eliminate uh, these beehives before queens and drones would participate in mating. Now let's return to the positive selection example. Once again, you have to understand that, for example, if, if it is going to be a field of plants, we have to eliminate these plants from open breeding by destroying them, so we can prevent these low-performing plants to pollinate with those that is good performers. So good performers would uh, pollinate only each other. And uh, the same rule would be applied in the next generation. So, as you see, this is not very practical uh, method to use uh, for selection of honeybees because too many beehives have to be destroyed, which cost money, of course. But on the other hand, this can be a practical method to use for selection of plants. And this is all for today. Thumbs up if you like this video, let me know that you like this video and I will make many more videos about breeding and selection. See you in the next video. Goodbye.